and welcome back to Concert Critiques in Cars with Emily. I was so excited about this show and I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous because they are um, not a US domestic band. So I was afraid with Omicron, they would not be able to come, but obviously they came. That's why I'm here talking to you right now. So the band was the Wombats and I am super pumped. Um, the opener was Clubhouse and their first song had like a really chill vibe. Um, it, I liked the song, it was good. Um, I liked the drop right before the bridge, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, there was a little bit of a quicker pace in their second song, which I thought was really nice. And then they covered Electric Feel, which was like the perfect cover for their band. I thought it worked really well with their set so far up to that point. Um, definitely like met the vibe that they were going for. So, so I thought that was really um, a good cover. Then after that, they played um, a song that they are going to release called Dance on My Heart. So it was the first time that they were playing it in front of an audience. So I thought that was cool. Got to experience that. Um, definitely had like a boy band feel to it, especially the beginning, but like not in a bad way, just in like a legit boy band feel. So I liked that, that was pretty good. Um, I liked the verses a lot. Then after that, they played home videos, which I had actually listened to before I um, came to the show because I looked them up the other day. And um, I really liked the instrumental. Um, I thought that it was really good. Um, and it actually was my favorite song um, during the show up to that point. So I really, really liked that song. Uh, really cool to see live, especially because I had just heard it that one or two times. Um, after that, they played Weekend, which I think I also listened to as well. Um, I really liked the alternation of like music and lyrics at the beginning. I thought that was really cool. Um, and I thought that it was a really, really good follow up to the previous song. I just, it like totally worked. And, and it, again, the, the two songs had very like similar sounds, but not too similar. It just, it was definitely a, a good follow up. Um, and then they ended their set with a song called No Way. <sighs> and it was just like, yikes um I think what happened again like the song was fine like it wasn't a bad song it's just I think what ended up happening was they had these two songs that kind of had that like similar feel which was different from the first two songs and then all of a sudden they went back to the first two songs and it was just like whoa like just I don't know it just it was a little bit jarring like that first few like seconds um yeah, it was just like a shift in instrumentals that was not a huge fan of. But overall, I thought they did a really great job. And again, I thought um, The Weeknd and um, Home Videos was, was a really, those were really good songs that I enjoyed listening to them. Um, I also liked the cover of Electric Feel. Uh, so yeah, let's get into The Wombats now. So The Wombats played um, Flip Me Upside Down, which was awesome. It's off their new album. So I thought that that was a good way to start their show. So here's like the problem, right? Is, is Wombats has a few albums that have very, very like popular songs that people expect and like to see. So, and their album just came out like six days ago. So it's also hard because now you're like, okay, well, where do you put these new songs that you know people are not gonna know without killing the vibe of your set? So that's just like, keep that in mind because that's what I'm gonna kind of be talking about a lot throughout this, these notes because, um well you'll see so anyway they opened with a song from the new album which again i thought was a great choice um and it was like a good high energy song so again newer song not a ton of people know it so i thought that was good um but it was still like high energy and it definitely got people into the show um then they played uh this car drives all by itself so i really really enjoyed seeing that live i have listened to the album a few times um and I won't lie, that song is not my super favorite on the album, but hearing it live was awesome. Um, I particularly loved the bridge and like loved the clear instrumental differences after the bridge uh, that were definitely clear to see. So I really, really liked that. Um, and hopefully it will now like make me enjoy that song more the next time I listen to it. So then after that, they played Moving to New York, which was just so fun. I really, really loved hearing that song. Uh, he let the crowd sing in the first chorus and then he went, so the drums were on like their own stage kind of, just, you know, like a little bump up uh, in the middle back of the stage. And so the lead singer went onto that when he was playing the instrumental part. So I thought that was cool. After that, 
he played cheetah, they played cheetah tongue which was a fantastic follow-up really really good right so it's another like well-known one but not like so crazy well known like it was just such a good combo i really liked that and again like super high energy so that was great and then they played techno fan which of the three was oh i don't know movie to new york is really good um ah, no techno fan might oh yeah anyway i loved the moving to new york techno fan in that like threesome and then again cheetah tongue is just such a good song so yeah, so it's just really cool. I love Techno Fan. Um, he was like singing while playing the piano with one hand. So that was like incredible. And they just like, he was jumping around on stage when he was not singing. Really, really liked that three song combo. Thought it was really, really great. After that, they started, but definitely something was wrong. And so he said they had to start over and he was explaining that they think that his guitar was on uh, mute. And, um, you know, we started talking about the fact that this was their first show back. So like, they're still trying to figure stuff out. So, so again, it was just like a fun moment that probably won't happen for the rest of the tour. So I really liked that and felt like it was like genuinely like first show back, uh, first show in the United States. So, so yeah, I really liked that. They played another song after, uh, sorry, off their new album, um, Ready for the High. And I thought that was a really great follow-up. Again, you get New York, Cheetah Tug, Techno Band, like, and then you get um, Ready for the High. So I really, really liked that. I thought that was a great follow-up. Um, and especially, again, it's like a song off the new album. However, that one was definitely released, so it was known a little bit better. Um, and during that song, a guy in a wombat suit came out with a bright red plastic trumpet and was pretending to play the trumpet part during the bridge and for the rest of the song. So I really liked that. That was like a super fun touch. After that, they played Pink Lemonade. Um, okay, so I couldn't tell if the drum was recorded or if the drummer was playing both the keyboard and the drums because at one point he was legit playing both the keyboard and the drums. So like definitely amazing. Um, but yeah, super impressive. Again, that Pink Lemonade just like in general has a slower vibe feel. And so I thought that actually worked really well after um, their previous song because again, it was like off the newer album. And if you didn't really know it, you like kind of get into the Pink Lemonade, like less crazy vibe. So, so again, I thought that was really well done. Um, I really liked the order. After that, they played Everything I Love is Going to Die, another new song, which was a great follow-up. Uh, really liked that. I thought that was a good choice. Then they did like an extended instrumental intro. Um, and he let the crowd sing the first lines, like didn't even try to sing the first lines to kill the director. Um, so I really like that. And then they also let the crowd sing the bridge, but he had to like back away from the stage. And at first I thought it was cause we were just being like too loud. And I was like, oh, that's like a cute little touch, right? Like, whoa, you guys are so excited. Then afterwards I realized it was because of feedback and that was fine. It's fine. But it was like in the moment I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. He like knows that we're so excited. Um, so again, really good song. And, um, you know, definitely a lot of people knew that and liked it. So that was cool. After that, they sang People Don't Change, Time Does. Um, at first, I like didn't really recognize it, but I knew it was off the new album. Um, and again, it's like hard to place those newer songs. So it wasn't my favorite song in the set, but it definitely was well placed, right? So it's like you get off of this like kill the director and then you kind of go into um, People Don't Change, Time Does. So, so again, definitely maybe the low point of this set, but it's a new song and you're trying to promote the new album. So like, can't really knock it. Um, after that, they played Lemon to a Night Fight, which is just so epically good. Oh, that song is so wonderful. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, actually right before they played it, there was like a crowd member who must have yelled the song title at wanting them to play it next. And so they were kind of like, wow, like you're like really good at this. Maybe you should do this and like announce all the songs. Um, and then, you know, it was just kind of a back and forth. So I really liked that. And again, definitely a unique, everyone is excited to be back. So I really liked that. I thought that was cool. After that, they played Worry, which is off their new album. Um, I really liked the like pre-chorus maybe, or like right before the chorus and the chorus. And again, I thought, even though it's a newer song, I thought it was a really good follow-up to Lemon to a Night Fight because it just had that similar vibe and like a similar energy. And so 
I thought that they placed these songs really well. Following Worry, they play Jump Into the Fog. Um, definitely changed the guitar part at the beginning, so I really liked that. Uh, super fun song. Loved the bridge and the end. It was just like different for sure and super fantastic. Loved the instrumental changes on that one. I thought it was really well done, so I really, really liked that as well. Um, then they played Don't Poke the Bear, which is off their new album. And it was good, like nothing crazy good, but it was definitely good. And so it's interesting. I was talking to a few people before and after the show, and a lot of people said that that's not their favorite song. So they were interested to see if they were gonna play it and how it was gonna make them feel afterwards. And so I think it definitely enhanced my love or like for the song. Um, again, it, it's not like my go-to off their new album for sure, but I definitely thought it was good live. And I think it definitely added now when I listen back, I'll be like, oh yeah, that was so good. Um, so yeah, so again, good choice. I thought it, it, it was good, just like nothing out of the usual that was like, oh my gosh, it was so good. Um, then they played Tokyo, which was like so good. Um, really great follow up. And actually it was kind of cool because in my head it was like a bit of a theme, right? Because don't poke the bear. And then they talk about like the beast. And so, I don't know, it was good. I thought that was really like a fun follow up in just in terms of lyrics, but also in terms of vibe. Um, so then after that, he introduced the next song as a song about what his wife had once said to him like early on in their relationship. And he was like, it was a little bit creepy. And it was, if you ever leave, I'm coming with you. So again, that is like their bigger single off of their new album. Fantastic, really, really enjoyed seeing it. And again, like super well placed after coming off of Tokyo, which like, I mean, God, you can't really beat that. It was so, such a good, like again, one, two combo. Um, and then they talked about walking off for the encore, but they were like, yeah, okay, we're gonna play like a last song. And then they played Greek Tragedy. Um, at the beginning, the bass is air drummed, which I thought was fantastic. I really, really liked that. That was a, a cool little thing. And they were just like going crazy. Like anytime they weren't singing, they were jumping around the stage. It was just an amazing energy. And again, super great follow-up. I mean, think about it. You got Tokyo, then you had, um, if you, if you ever leave, I'm coming with you, followed by Greek tragedy, like such a great way to, to end the show. Um, and so I really liked that. And I was actually a little bit surprised that they didn't save Greek tragedy for the encore, but then thinking about it, I was like, oh, I know what songs are coming in the encore. So it made sense. And I think it was a really great decision. I mean, again, you finish with three really strong songs like that. It just, it worked and it really, ugh, it was just so fantastic. So then they came back and which I totally predicted they opened with Method to the Madness, which was the perfect place for that song. They, I was a little bit worried because I love Method to the Madness because of the ending. It's just such an epic buildup. The lyrics are just like some of my favorite lyrics, maybe potentially of all time. Such a good end to the song, but the beginning is just like slow, not in a bad way, just slow. And so I was like, where are they gonna put this in the set? Like, it's gonna be like, uh, I don't know, it's gonna bring me down and then pick me back up. But putting it, the first song of the encore, brilliant. It was so well placed. Uh, and it was, I mean, again, I knew it was going to be, or I hoped it was going to be, and I was definitely, definitely like way satisfied. Oh, it was just so great. The build up to that song was so epic. It was just, so good again the lyrics and just oh it was great i really really loved the end of that song i actually even enjoyed the beginning of that song and sometimes i don't like love it but it was good and then again you just like know it's gonna be so epic oh it's so good it was, it was epic all right so then after that i wasn't sure if they were gonna do which one first um but they played let's dance to joy division which was just like insane the crowd was insane um, we sang like the first few lines and then the first part of the bridge and it was just amazing. Um, so yeah, the wombat came back on stage at that point and danced and did a few push-ups even. And so it was just amazing. It was so fantastic. I love that song. That is like the first song that I heard by them. And so that's just like my wombat song. <laughs> um, it was great. It was really, really great. So then after that, they played Turn. So again, I knew they were gonna play both of those in the encore, just wasn't sure which one first. 
personally I would have loved to end on Joy Division, but I understand why they did turn last. And again, turn is a fantastic song, so I'm not like upset by any means, but Joy Division last would have just been amazing. But when they did do turn, um, super fun to see live. Um, they let us sing uh, before the first chorus came on. And like the ending is just so fantastic. It was just like super energetic. So great, so great. Oh, all right, so time for my score, yikes. Um, if it was just the Wombats, this would be really close to a 10. There was one song in their whole set, which I wasn't a huge fan of, and I can't even knock them on it because it was off their new album, and obviously they're trying to make their new album known and loved, and so again, it's like, where do you place these songs? You don't want to play them all at the beginning necessarily because then your audience might be bored. So like, I get that, and I'm like, maybe taking off like a quarter of a point for that, but it's really gonna come down to Clubhouse and how I feel about them, <laughs> unfortunately, which is too bad because the Wombats were so, so, so epically good. Um, so Clubhouse, again, I really like those two songs. That like weird shift in at the end was not my favorite. I liked their cover. I thought that was really good. Um, man, but the Wombats just like, I mean, I feel like it's like Clubhouse, like, minus points, but the Wombats just, like, added them all up again. Like, they were so epically good. Uh, I think I'm going to give this one a... a 9.5. Yeah, 9.5. I mean, again, Clubhouse, they were hit or miss. Wombats were amazing, and, but again, like, you're, you're adding those new songs into the mix, so... But I can't... Again, it's like, they did a good job, and I thought that they really thought about their playlist and the order in which they were playing the songs. And I mean, saving Method to the Madness until the encore was just absolutely brilliant. And then following it up with Joy Division, again, you're like this high energy, so fantastic. So I really, really liked that. That was, I, I mean, oh my gosh. And then to end it, like that last like 20, 25 minutes of the show was just like insanely amazing. Um, yeah, 9.5, like so good. And again, like, I would be so interested to see what my rating would have been had the opener been different, maybe? I don't know. I feel bad. Like, Clubhouse was fine. I don't, I, they're not bad. I just, you know, when you compare them to the Wombats, it's, it's hard. Um, yeah. So, let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Were you there? Did you want to go? Are you going tomorrow? Um, like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.